Whenever I say yes to an audiobook, I have managed to forget how complicated, complex, demanding, and nerve-wracking making an audiobook actually is. What's uh, wonderful about it is that I don't have the audience in front of me. It's an insular, isolated, sort of magical uh, dynamic. It's me and the book and you in the other room. So it becomes very private. Um, it's not unlike the feeling I used to have with my kids when I read to my kids that sort of secret thing. And now the bear came out of the woods. I mean, you have to have that, you know, you can't have that on a big stage. But it's very much like if you're doing a voiceover for anything. Uh, I'm used to doing that. It's interesting in another way. It's all the same thing. You're still thinking the thoughts for the character, hopefully. And uh, it's just making the switches. The switches, I think, come much quicker because it's just you. I am of the belief that storytelling is storytelling. Whether you're doing it on a screen, a huge screen or a small screen, um, whether you're doing it for radio or audio literature, storytelling is storytelling. Human beings are predisposed to want to hear good stories. It's as ancient as civilization. It goes back to gathering around the fire and exploring the mythos of being human. So piled onto the top of the actual narration or reading and storytelling part of the uh, recording, in a book like Diodan, there are characters, one from Russia, one from England. There are both men and women, and there is uh, what we used to call on Star Trek lots of techno babble. So it was a, uh, a challenge and an opportunity.